Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the tenth episode of our series. Don't be sad, you guys. Be happy. Smile. We're joined by Brother Muhammad Tim Humble, who's been giving us tools to stay happy, to reach that sustained happiness. Brother Muhammad, thank you for being with me. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I certainly appreciate uh, me being with you. Actually, this is your program, and thank you for allowing me to host it. And I benefited, as I'm sure the viewers have as well. Brother Muhammad. I want to talk about, inshallah ta'ala, patience. You mentioned patience before the episode. You mentioned that you want to speak about it. I know it's really easy to tell pe other people to be patient. I know when we're growing up, our parents tell us, you know, be patient. And sometimes you, don't, you can't find it. You don't have the patience. You want results now. Especially these days, social media, Facebook, Internet, smartphones, iPads. You want results now. It's hard to be patient. So how can we develop this characteristic? And why should we develop this characteristic? I think the, the, the most important thing to begin with is to recognize the virtue of patience. And the reason for that is once you know the value of something and you know the virtue of something, it's easier to motivate yourself to, to strive to achieve it. And you only have to see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relates patience to times of difficulty. Uh, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, for example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوَىٰ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we're going to test you with something of a loss, something of difficulty and, and hardship. And Allah mentions some of the things that these, th these, these, this loss is going to be in. So it could be in hunger, uh, a loss of uh, fruits, uh, a loss of income, a loss of wealth, and a loss of life. Subhanallah. And in all of those things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give glad tidings to those people who are patient. This so is an amazing, amazing, an am amazing uh, principle. need for that and you only have to see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions so many virtues for patience in the Quran for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he is with the patient that Allah is Allahu ma'as sabirin and we hear Allah people is with the patient I'm sorry to interrupt you I even hear this in the streets and the buses people using this uh, ayah all the time here yeah, in Cairo in Egypt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. is with the patient yeah alhamdulillah yeah and I think uh, that is you know, this, this meaning of being with the patient, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to help you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to guide you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to protect you when you are patient. Okay. We heard in the last episode that victory comes with patience. So the only way to achieve victory is to achieve that patience. Okay. Guidance comes through patience because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that we made them a'imma, we made them into leaders who were guided uh, by our command yahduna bi amrina they were guided by our command lamma sabaru when they were patient and that sort of indicates to us that before when they were not patient allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give them that leadership and that ability to sort of be an example for other people the word leadership here doesn't mean leadership as in uh, political sense political point. leadership it means leadership as in being an example for others okay to be you know like when we say waj'alna lil muttaqina Imam, yes. make us an imam for the muttaqi. Yes. The meaning of the imam, he's not the guy who leads the prayer or the guy who right. leads the Muslims right, in the country. Right. But the, the, to make us an example, a, a, a leading example for okay. the pious. And that only comes, as Allah said, sabaru, when they were patient. So before the patience, it didn't come. When the patience is there, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the ability to be a leading example and of course to be guided so guidance also comes with patience okay. relief comes with patience i mean we can patience is something that is a vast topic and its virtues are just so many to me more than you can mention would you say brother muhammad tim humble that people nowadays are suffering from a lack of patience i think they are suffering from a lack of patience and i think sometimes this comes through not knowing what patience actually is Patience in Islam is more than just biting your tongue when you're angry. A that's, lot more. That's what we just think of. We think that's what we think of patience, right? I'm really mad, but I'm not going to say anything. That's what we but think. More, right. Uh, we think of patience as being basically that, you know, holding your tongue, uh, like Allah Azza wa said, uh, you know, that those people who are al kathimin al like those people who they conceal their anger and they, right. you know, they will and they like they forgive, forgive people. other people, they overlook other people's faults. 
this is only the, the, uh, the tiniest fraction of what Islam considers patience to be. Okay. Actually, patience in Islam comes into three very distinct categories. The first is patience in doing good deeds. And we have an example of this in an ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, رَبُّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فَاعْبُدْهُ وَاسْطَبِرْ لِعِبَادَتِهِ هَلْ تَعْلَمُ لَهُ سَمِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Maryam that the, Allah is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and everything between. So worship Him and remain consistent yes. and patient in His worship. Subhanallah, yeah. Do you know anything that is comparable to Him? Uh, and so this ayah is, the, the middle of this ayah is telling us about the virtue of being regular and consistent in doing good deeds. And that for me is a, a thing that sometimes people neglect. Sometimes people do, are aware of the need to be patient in concealing their anger in, in other things. Uh, but sometimes people are not aware of the need to be patient in doing good deeds. And that means to consistently do them day after day after day. You know, night after night, week after week, month after month, not to be a Ramadan Muslim or a Jumu'ah Muslim who, you know, on the day of Jumu'ah, you suddenly become very religious, but then, you know, once the Salah is gone, you're off again and you've forgotten Allah until the next week comes. Or, you know, an, a, a, a Ramadan, Ramadan Muslim and so on and so forth. But to have this sabr in worshipping Allah, this patience in worshipping Allah, such that you worship Allah consistently and regularly. And of course, the most beloved deeds to Allah are the most consistent, even if they are small, as the Prophet Sallallahu said. Okay. Muha, the most regular and the most consistent, even if they are very, very sure. few. Okay. So I think the first thing we have to concentrate on is patience in, in doing good deeds. And of course, we want to relate this to hardship and difficulty. For us to develop this patience is going to benefit us massively at times of hardship, because that is sometimes a time when it's hard to do some good deeds. For example, especially in a time when you look at uh, when the society as a whole is suffering. You know, you look at some of the things that have happened around the Muslim world and, and troubles that have happened and when the society has really been, the fabric of the society has really been ripped apart. It's very hard at that time to remain consistent in worshipping Allah the way that you worshipped Allah at a time of safety and security. So, you know, going out to the masjid, coming back, praying that the five times a day yeah. because it's a time of, of uh, you know, turmoil and trouble right. and strife. This affects all sorts, I'm trying to interrupt you, even your, your, your relationship with your fellow Muslims, I, I, this can definitely bring about depression, which we've experienced recently in the Middle East with this turmoil, it has affected the hearts Absolutely. and minds. Absolutely, and I think that that is something that, you know, in terms of hardship and depression, any hardship, whether it's on a societal level or whether it's on the level of an individual, every hardship you go through makes it harder for you to actually remain consistent in doing good deeds. But in the previous episode, we discussed that doing those good deeds is the very reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the way out for you from, right, you know, from right. the difficulty you're facing. Right. So really, it's an absolute key when you're having a hard time, when you're you know, suffering, when you're a little bit down, it's absolutely key that you remain consistent in doing good deeds and that you don't stop doing your good deeds because you're s you suffered a, a hardship or a setback. So that's the first kind. Brother Muhammad, now I can see uh, why and how patience would be a valuable quality of somebody who's experiencing a hardship and going through a difficult time, a challenging time in their life. But if someone is going through a time of ease, uh, there's, is there a need for patience? I mean, everything's going well. I mean, again, th this, uh, this type of patience we're talking about, this first kind, which is the patience in doing good deeds, is probably even more apparent at times of ease than it is at times of difficulty. Because at times of difficulty, again, we said, it's relatively difficult to, to remain, to keep it. Right. But you build it at times of ease. Right, it, right. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayah is talking about patience in worshipping Allah, okay. whether you're in times of ease or whether or you're in times of difficulty. Okay. Uh, and again, we talked about, you know, practicing your religion when things are easy before the time comes when things are hard. And then Allah will give you the ability to remain patient and consistent in doing your acts of worship before things become more difficult. Brother Muhammad, would you recommend those of us at times when we are feeling a lack of patience or we feel like we've reached a, a low, uh, low threshold, we, we're, we're very irritated, irritable, uh, we're not patient with ourselves and with others, uh, and, and we're not consistent in the worship of Allah, would you recommend us going back to the, 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 the seer of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the companions, and looking at the extreme amount of patience that the Prophet, peace be upon him, exerted in extremely difficult times? 
No doubt. I think that uh, I think that there are a number of ways to develop patience, and patience is something that has to be developed. You know, you have to work on it. It's like uh, you know, when you go to the gym, you're, you know, you're lifting weights and exercise. You you begin relatively intolerant and and you right. know quite you know not weak. able, quite weak, and you build strength. Right. There's patience, no stamina at first. No, patience is something you have to build okay. over time. You don't get it in you know in an instant. I say oh, I'm going to be patient today. You, you have to build up your stamina. You have to build up your patience and and you build it up by enduring hardships. And I think that's one of the great benefits of suffering hardships is that, it, as we said, it builds your character. And it, it, one of the aspects of your character it builds is your patience. Right. And that patience doesn't come. I mean, if you look at the patience the Prophet ﷺ displayed in Medina, isn't that built upon the hardships that he endured right. in Makkah? Yeah, great point. You yeah. know, it, it, the, those hardships he endured in Makkah, that he survived and that he got over, led to that immense amount of patience that Allah right. Azzawajal gave him in Medina and in you know again each year is leading to the next Certainly. the hardships you endure build patience within you and it's not that patience is something you just you know you just get out right. of nothing you develop it you work on it so we talked about you know that type that first type but we also have to talk about the other two types of patience as well okay perhaps after the break we don't have a minute left but really quickly brother Muhammad we have an expression we say a lot in the states you know oh this separates the men from the boys or for lack of a better expression but indeed patience builds character it can make you a man or a woman for that matter. It brings about, I guess we can say, maturity. Absolutely. Patience is a sign of maturity. It's a sign of wisdom. It's a sign of knowledge. Uh, rushing into things, making rash decisions, uh, being you know, sort of um, unreliable, going from one thing to the next, right. is a sign of immaturity. Yeah, and it's certainly. a sign of a lack of wisdom. So I, I think it's a hugely important part of a person's character. P uh, great point, Brother Muhammad. We're going to take a short break. We'll get right back to this after the break. You guys stay tuned for more Brother Muhammad. For more, we'll be right back, inshallah. For more, we'll be right back, inshallah. Welcome back to Don't Be Sad. You guys smile. We're with Brother Muhammad Tim Humble, who's speaking about patience. Uh, Brother Muhammad, in the first segment, you spoke at length about patience. However, you did mention there's more than one type of patience, and that patience in Islam is more comprehensive than simply not speaking, for example, when angry. Can you please elaborate on that? Okay, so we've talked about the first type of patience, which is patience in doing good deeds and how that relates to times of ease and times of difficulty. The second kind of patience is the opposite. Patience in avoiding sin. And again, this has an element that relates to times of ease and an element that relates to times of difficulty. In times of difficulty and times of ease, the kinds of sin you might be tempted to do are probably different. For example, um, theft uh, is more probably more common oh, in a time you. of poverty. Yeah, right? I got you. Yeah, sure. um, you know things like uh, perhaps uh, things like uh, uh, you know other sins that people might fall into are more common at times of ease. Certainly. So I think that this idea is the second type of patience is all about being patient in avoiding sin. Because there are various uh, sort of motivations or various sort of things that, that attract you to disobey Allah. One is your own self, of course, your own nafs. Inna nafs al ammaratun bisu. The soul is constantly inclined towards evil, as Allah Azza tells us in Surah Yusuf. And of course, there is the shaitan, who is only going to add to the Certainly. desires in times of ease, there can be other temptations. 
uh, you know things are very easy for you it's very easy for you to spend your wealth on haram because you right. have a lot of it yes uh, it's very easy for you to dis to fall into a, a, a habit of disobeying Allah because people around you at the same level in society are right. doing so right you see them you know disobeying Allah you want to disobey Allah as they do right so that is also you know there are different types of challenges you know yeah. it's sort of equally present in times of difficulty and times of ease but it's a different kind of challenge yeah yes yeah, in both you need to be patient in avoiding sin because patient in doing good deeds is one thing but it's not complete without its partner which is to be patient in avoiding sin right so that's going to give you that sort of balance right whereby you're not just doing lots of good deeds and disobeying Allah of course not. nor are you avoiding disobeying Allah but not really doing anything to increase your status and increase your iman in terms okay. of your good deeds you're balancing the two okay and that goes back to us being a moderate and a, and a middle ummah an ummah that is that is balanced okay. so we avoiding we are avoiding disobeying Allah and, and of course okay. doing whatever we can to obey Allah but uh, brother Muhammad would you say that avoiding the sin takes precedence initially or it's it's important to keep a balance as you mentioned it's very important to, to keep a balance and I actually think that people's circumstances are very different okay good point. Um, right. I mean sometimes a person is suffering from a particular sin which is clearly holding them back okay and of course that believing that sin does take precedence okay but but I don't think that we can reduce a person's life to, just to a sinning. single one sin that they don't that they need to stop doing right rather it's a bit more comprehensive than that okay. because for example there are some actions that leaving that action is itself a sin let's look at leaving the prayer for example right so doing the prayer is a part of being patient in worship, worship. and not leaving the prayer is a, a part of leaving sin so right, you actually right, find right. a lot of actions which are both both of them yeah great point you know not abandoning the prayer is from the second type of patience and sticking to the prayers from the first type. Okay. So th it has that sort of double edge to it. Certainly, yeah. But okay. of course, that's not the only kind. That those are still not the only kinds of patients. Well, what, 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 what other kinds do we have left? And the third type is the, the third and final type, and this is probably the most significant in terms of our topic, is patience over what befalls you from the decree of Allah. Okay, and this is a great point. This is exactly what is this is our program essentially. This is what we're talking about. I mean. Uh, the thing is, the other two types are, are critical because they build into that. Certainly. But this is the type of patience that you've been struck with a calamity and you are losing your patience in one way or another. You're either right. losing some of your good deeds, you're doing bad deeds, or you're unable to remain patient in the face of that calamity. The third kind is all about being patient over what befalls you. And of course, you remember the advice of Luqman uh, to his son. Um, he made uh, many, many, uh, he gave many points of advice in Surah Luqman that Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that Luqman gave to his son. But of course, he said uh, at the end of uh, one of the ayat, "Wasbir ala ma asabak in nadarika min azmi al-umur." That be patient over what befalls you. Indeed, this is from the most, or the perhaps the most difficult, or the uh, things requiring the most determination. Subhanallah. <laughs> yes. In azmi al-umur, those things yes. that require. <laughs> You know, azir it requires yeah. a real, you know, like Difficulty. effort and a real determination. Right. It's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. And Allah <laughs> like Azza said uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu be patient in what way? He said, be patient kama sabara ulul azmi min al rusul as those determined prophets were patient. Mm, so those five yeah. prophets who, of course, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have uh, uh, Ibrahim uh, and Musa, uh, and uh, and yes. Isa and of course uh, Nuh before them, who are the five prophets who are known as Ulul Azm, those prophets of extreme determination and patience. Okay. And again, they are known for their patience. If you ask what made, you know, what is Nuh known for? Uh, the, the, you know, they're known for their patience. Yeah, that's a great point. Extreme patience, you yeah. know, in in the face of difficulty, you know, more than the other prophets. Yeah, certainly, great point. That's a wonderful point. So you know. It, it, this is something that I think is, is very, very important. And it's something, again, you built. And it has levels, okay? So it's not one level. The first, maybe the most basic level, is just to recognize that the calamity came from Allah. That's a difficult thing to recognize. The most it? fundamental thing that a Muslim has, really right down at you know, level one, right. is just to recognize that actually everything comes from Allah. SubhanAllah. But that's not actually the the only thing that you aim for just simply to say oh it came from Allah and I'm angry and I'm upset and right. I'm not patient it's a difficult thing to accept brother Muhammad 
I think accepting is a higher level, but I'm talking about a realization okay. at the most basic level, just simply realizing that this comes from Allah. Because the disbeliever doesn't believe that, they're g that the good and bad things that happen to them in their life are a result of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for them. Okay. So we just simply say, this is, this is something that Allah has decreed. Qaddar Allahu wa ma sha'a fa'al. Yeah. <laughs> or in another narration, Qadar Allahi wa ma sha'a fa'al. Both of them are correct. Okay. That you say Allah has decreed or it is the decree of Allah and He does what He wants. Okay. This in itself gives you so much relief at a basic level. How okay. much relief you get just by saying when something bad happens, Qadar Allah wa Qadar Allahu wa ma sha'a fa'al. Okay. How much relief you get just yeah, by yeah. saying that. Yeah, you suddenly feel I feel better now. Yeah, it's true. You know, you it feel has so much relief. A soothing effect. And that's just by admitting that it comes from Allah. The next level you want to try to achieve is a degree of patience. So that you're not simply just recognizing it comes from Allah, but you're actually being patient over it and remaining constant in good deeds, in avoiding bad deeds. And the third level, and this is where it really gets to, you know, uh, this is where it gets to the level, as Allah has said, uh, you know, وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ The only person who's going to be able to be able to achieve this is the one who has been given a great portion by Allah. <laughs> and that is contentment with the Qadr of Allah. Okay. So we're not talking about recognizing it's from Allah. We're not talking about just simply being patient while finding it, you know, hard to bear. We're talking about enjoying the hardships or if not enjoying, finding contentment right. in the hardships. Why? Because you recognize that Allah is more merciful to you than even your mother would be merciful to you. Allah is more merciful than the most merciful that you can imagine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more merciful than that. And He will not decree something for you that is bad for you. Everything is an opportunity, so you see it as a means of contentment. And if you see how the companions were, we mentioned in the Battle of the Ahzab, those people who, when the people said to them, you know, that everyone's gathered against you. Fear, fear them, be scared of them. It increased them in Iman. It increased them right. in Iman. And they said, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Right. You know, these little words you say, right. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. They bring you so much relief. Right. These people increased in Iman and they became content with what Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had promised them. And when a hardship would befall them, they would say, This is what Allah and His Messenger promised us. And they would become content with it. And that really is a very hard thing to achieve. Because for you to go through, a, let's say, a calamity, a car crash, lose your job, and then to say, with true contentment, Alhamdulillah, you know, I'm, right. I'm, I'm completely happy with what Allah has decreed for me, that's something that requires a it's lot of effort. Right, it's definitely a tall order. It's, I think it's important to remember, Brother Muhammad, in the Western world where we come from, and perhaps in other countries as well, when a calamity strikes, some people... This drives them to a point of, of, of truly, uh, it drives them towards mental illness because they simply can't accept what happened to them. Perhaps they lost a loved one or something fundamentally changed in a negative way in their life as they perceive it to be. And maybe they end up in, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a home, in, um, I'm not sure what quite the word is, but th this drive them, drives them towards mental illness because they simply could not accept that this happened to them. So perhaps this is because they are lacking those points that you mentioned. I think so, and I think that, that this is from the great benefits of our belief in Qadr. And I said that, you know, I've mentioned in a previous episode that belief in Qadr is actually a difficult issue. It's not, it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. It's quite hard, and it's quite hard to understand. Sure. Um, and yet, despite all of that, you find that there is a benefit in it, a huge benefit. And one of them is that it saves you from so much distress and worry to recognize that it comes from Allah and to actually learn not only just to recognize it, not only to be patient, but to start to strive yourself to be content. And you can train yourself to it. It's okay. not such a tall order, you can't achieve it. Okay. Allah doesn't burden a soul with more than He can bear. And th thank you. That's a wonderful way to, to I'm sorry we're out of time. It's a wonderful, a wonderful way to, to end it, uh, Brother Muhammad, because indeed it seemed like a tall order. Like, look, I'm not that great you know I'm not, I'm not practicing as well as the other guy this guy has more knowledge than me he's a better believer than me I can't reach this tall order but what you're saying is that Allah doesn't burden a person with more than they can bear you can do it okay. you have to train yourself and it's levels you have to begin with knowledge you have to start acting on it okay. and you know you get to that level of patience and then you get to a level where 
you actually don't mind whether Allah gives you a hardship or He gives you ease because you're content with what Allah does. Allahu Akbar. Allah. Thank you so much for your time, Brother Muhammad. I certainly appreciate it and I look forward to having you on, to being with you next episode, inshallah. And uh, you guys at home, thank you for watching. Don't be sad. I certainly hope that you benefited uh, from this episode as, as I. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.